Well, good morning to all our viewers on Mac TV, and we're very privileged this morning to catch up with Sanju Patel, who is no stranger to our viewers on Mac TV. You would have seen him, of course, as a player, team owner, and a great supporter of cricket in America. So he is joining us this morning, and just to give us a perspective of how the COVID-19 pandemic has panned out in his world. And we know that he is in the hospitality world as well. And, uh, you know, just to get his views and obviously uh, the views of uh, the U.S. Tigers cricket team, of which he is the owner as well. Uh, good morning, Sanju. Good morning, Vinod. Thank you so much for having me. How things are uh, at your end? I know it might be a little bit uh, tough. You're in the hospitality um, industry. I've seen some of your beautiful hotels and... Um, which area is this? Uh, um, which area are you located in? I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you know, hospitality and retail have been the the most affected sort of industries in America, and but we're still hopeful. We're still bullish, and as we always say, never bet against America. We'll, we will come back stronger and, uh, and better. And what, in terms of the figures, what's it like in the South Carolina, in your region, at least in your area? What's it like? Do you have those figures for us? In terms of the, those hospitalized and uh, the deaths and so forth? Yeah, roughly around 6,500 that were tested positive. Um, about 138, 140 deaths. Right. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, we're we're very blessed that that not only the infected numbers are fairly low compared to to the state and other other cities or states, but even the death percentage is is very very low. So we're, we're blessed to have that. And in terms of um, over the last week or so, over the last ten days, let's see, are you seeing any indication of? of a flattening? Well, the numbers are definitely due to the whole quarantine and, and numbers are definitely coming down, right? So that's a positive sign, but that's not to say that the numbers are not gonna spike again. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just one of those things where until the vaccine is out, you know, there will be people infected and there will, unfortunately, we will lose some lives Right, whether it's the elderly or or someone with weaker sort of immunity, but um, I think overall I'm happy that the world is is trying to get back to work and the world is saying, you know, enough is enough. We we need because there are more people who will be, you know, even mentally, not if not physically, they'll be dying, uh, depression, domestic violence bankruptcies and people don't understand that a lot of the people we human beings have pride you know and 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 some people rather die with a pride than than to see their whole family suffer and with hunger yeah it's true it's, it's very true and um closer to home how has it been uh, with the hotels and of course uh, are they occupied uh we are as you know, I mean, there are a few hotels that are shut down and uh, in Charleston, we're running roughly 10 to 15 percent occupancies. So fortunately, the banks came in, you know, they have helped us in, in payments, deferrals and, and those sort of thing. And for us, the, the biggest thing is to keep our staff sort of um, on payroll and, and, and keep it going because the headache of re if you close a hotel, the headaches of, of starting it back up are, are far more worse than than running it with a low occupancy. As I always say, you know, a building is like a living thing. You know, you have to occupy it. You have to keep uh, using it or else, um, you know, the, the maintenance cost to get it start up again. It's going to be huge. And I, I guess that is what you are alluding to here this morning. In, in terms of getting back out to work in the, your area, how soon do you think? that there may be some positive movement in that direction? Well, we're very fortunate, you know, we, uh, the city has already uh, made, you know, the parks and all that accessible to citizens. The restaurants will start today. 
with 50% occupancy, even in-room dining. The patios were open last week. So we're seeing a lot of positive sort of uh, steps and, and hope that within a month or so, we'll go back to living the normal life. And in terms of uh, the cricket, uh, any activities expected soon? I know that you, uh, it's very hard to keep you off a cricket field. And uh, I'm sure that you have been, you know, just looking forward to, to some sort of action. You know, I, I'm so damn fortunate that I, I live in the Carolinas and I'm blessed to have some amazing golf courses here. So I'm still swinging. I've played more golf in the last six weeks than I have in my entire life. So, wow. you know, it's, it's been, uh, I get that feeling of hitting the damn ball. and, and <laughs> But, um, you know, it's... A cricket, a cricket is part of us, right? It's 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 hard to say that we're never going back, but we're hoping that everyone who's affected can can get back on their feet sooner than later, and and you know we can go come back to U.S. Open or or just just be in that. Cricket is a cricket is a family in USA, right? It's not a professional sport, and and people like Mr. Mack who started the U.S. Open back in 2009. And, you know, U.S. Tigers was actually born in 2009 at U.S. Open. So, and hence, we always make it a point to be at U.S. Open because it's a very, very special thing for us. We have won several tournaments across the country, but it all started with U.S. Open. And, of course, uh, there, uh, you know, in speaking with uh, Mark Corishi, the U.S. Open is still on from December the 16th, and that's seven months away. So we're hoping that things get back to a great sense of normalcy by then. Um, will we be seeing Sanju Patel and the U.S. Tiger? You know, you know to, be, to be quite honest, um, uh, it it's stands to be seen at the moment. We're not 100% sure because our focus is... You know, it, it takes a lot of work to put a team together to make sure everyone is on the same page to to have all the logistics sort of, uh, you know, sorted. So uh, we're not 100% sure at the moment. Um, we definitely love to be there and, and we're going to try. But as you know, once the economy do pick back up, our, our focus will be to get the hotels and all our all, all the other hotels that are in construction or in, in the in the planning phase to get them going. And, and after doing what's needed, if we feel the need that, you know, we, we have the time to get out and, and actually give seven days um, to cricket, then we will definitely be there. But at the moment, I can't commit. Yeah. And uh, speaking about your history at the U.S. Open, and uh, of course, you would have added so much. Uh, by bringing your team, your team, as you said before, it was actually formalized at the, 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 the 2009 U.S. Open. How critical is that U.S. Open tournament um, to U.S. cricket? I think that's the only thing that has kept it alive. The cricket in U.S. is alive because of U.S. Cricket Open. I mean, I'm being very honest. I started... I started a an organization called the Friendship Cup, and we had almost 20 international players. It was more of the the smaller version of U.S. Open, right? So more competitive cricket. Um, but the commitment, not only time, but also money year after year after year that Mr. Mack has put in is, is commendable. I mean, you can't take that away from that man. He, he deserves all the credit. He deserves... Um, you know, every, every, every trophy that, that's out there. But cricket in America is still alive because of Mr. Matt Qureshi and the U.S. Cricket Open. And just your views, uh, Sanju, I know you're always a very outspoken uh, gentleman. Uh, your views on the administration of the central body, uh, which is uh, Cricket USA. Are you happy with where Cricket USA is at the moment? And uh, if so, or if not, um, what is your hopes and aspirations for cricket in America? Well, we know, first of all, I've never been a fan of USACA from day one. Uh, I've never been a fan of how it's been run. Um, what I don't like is, is when the younger 
you know, aspiring cricketers give up their, their primary jobs and give up their, their life goals just to play cricket for USA and only to be treated like a damn target employees, right? You know, mm. I, I hate to see that. And, and I've always been against people playing for Yusaka for the same reason is there is no upside to it. The grassroots level needs to be there, right? There needs to be the platform. There needs to be people watching you play. There needs to be the commercial end of the cricket has to be established with the grassroots level first before before you start or, or aspire to be a professional cricketer in America. It's just a long shot. You know, we have a couple examples. Ali is is probably one of the most prime and Steven Taylor. Right, uh, Ali Khan. Actually, I saw him play at U.S. Open a few years back, and and I was super impressed with with his his sort of cricket abilities. Right, and Steven Taylor has has done well. But you're talking about 350 million people, and out of that, I don't consider cricket as a only for the immigrants. Right, you have to consider the total population, and then what is your percentage? in that total population. And if you cannot capture that, and if it doesn't make sense, it's all about statistics, right? Everything we do in life. And, and so I've never been a fan of Yusaka and I, I request to all the team owners and, and all the managers to not lie to their, to their players, to, to give them hope because they do, players are committed, players are emotional, players are, you know, cricket in America is very different. So. Hopefully one day we'll have a better platform. Hopefully one day, um, you know, the, the players will get an opportunity and will actually get paid to, to stay, off, uh, stay off the field as well. Definitely. And, you know, you spoke of Ali Khan. Ali Khan shot into prominence directly because of the U.S. Open. Marco Rishi had brought in the Bravo Brothers from Trinidad. I was part of that entire negotiation. And they came to play for the U.S. All-Stars. They saw Ali Khan for the first time. And Dwayne Bravo took him to the G20 in Canada. And of course, being the captain of the Trinbago Riders, he brought him uh, to Trinidad as well to play. And the rest is history. So that was a case where the U.S. Open was opening a door for a young man as opposed to the central body, which is uh, Cricket USA. Well, you know, I don't know if you know the history back in 2009 to almost 2012-13. Mm -hmm. Wherever U.S. Tigers played and whoever played well for U.S. Tigers or whoever played well against U.S. Tigers was picked in the U.S. national team right away. Wow. We, were considered, we were considered as the platform, you know, mm -hmm. for, for younger players. And, and to us, it was always about the team. It was never about the player, right? I mean, Trinidad... Trinidad, I'm, I'm very close to Trinidad, right? Mm -hmm. The whole U.S. Tigers team, 50% has, has been from Trinidad. And, yeah. and, and know, Riyadh, Adrian, Adrian, Adrian Ali, Ali Riyadh. I mean, we have, we have a big list with, with mm -hmm. everyone who's been so kind to be part of our family. It's literally a family. I mean, Adrian and Riyadh has been, has been and they'll they'll be our family for rest of rest of my life, right? Rest of the whole U.S. Tigers life, and mm -hmm. we're very blessed for that. But yeah, I mean, you know, U.S. Tigers and U.S. Open. I think U.S. Open has given a lot of people a platform that they they thought they didn't have. Number one, and and U.S. Open has also given a platform to a lot of people who are only talking shit on Facebook thinking they were big, but when they really played competitive, they couldn't perform, right? So it also kind of made things on, on a level platform. Yeah, it leveled out a number of players because at the US Open, you are actually getting international opposition. Uh, of course, if you can just go closer to your team, the US Tigers, you had Riyad Emirates who would have played a couple of games for the West Indies as well, uh, just to name one of your players. And um, your domestic players now would have been playing together with him. But more importantly, even the domestic players on the U.S. Tigers team, they would have been rubbing shoulders with these guys. And, of course, they would have benefited from their experience and expertise in cricket. 
Hundred percent. I mean, you know, we've had the likes of Ovesha and Vandermeer and David Jacobs and and many international players on our team, and they've once they play with us, they kind of become a permanent fixture of our team, right? So, listen, I think we look at cricket very differently than than a lot of other people. Uh, to us, it's always been about the family and and being respectful and and playing the game that we love. It's never been about, you know trying to kill everyone or beat everyone. We just go out there, we do our best. And fortunately, we've won, uh, we've won more championships than we've lost. So, you know, across the country. So we're very blessed. But US Open have, have had the likes of Sunil Narayan and Saeed Ajmal and Shoaib Akhtar. And those are not small names to throw around. Those are pretty massive names in the world cricket. And, and when you get to even shake hands or or go to a toss and, and whatnot, it's a privilege, you know? So I, US Open, I have to say, is the only reason why cricket in America is still looked upon as, as there is some cricket that exists. Yes, definitely. It seems to be the, the, the lifeline of cricket uh, in America. And uh, of 100%. course, you guys would have, um, you know, also, uh, you know, kudos to, to guys like yourself who would go beyond the field, so to speak, to ensure that although Makarishi is bringing these international players in and bringing the, uh, having the platform, you are ensuring that the domestic players in America come across to the U.S. and get that opportunity to, to, to really benefit. I mean, absolutely. And there have been, you know, there have been like, I can probably count seven, eight people from the past. I'm not saying right now, but, you know, Sakibai, Sakibai has put in a lot of work. Love Keshvai from Dallas. Um, Yusuf Bai from Orlando. Daud Bai, I can't forget Daud Bai. You know, he's been around for the longest time. In fact, they won the first US Open yeah. uh, in 2009. Um, you know, and, and all of them, they have, they have been Pankaj Bai and Jayesh Bai. You know, they're Sharan, like... Sharan the the Zam, you can also throw in there as well. Sharan Sorry? Zam. Saraz Najam from Midwest Cricket as well. He's won. That's correct. That's correct. Um, you know, they've been the backbone of this, this competitiveness in America. And, and it's about time that all the owners know there's no sort of upside, right, to, the, to bringing a team or to participate. Yet every owner throws away 40 grand just in one tournament. Right, because they see the camaraderie between the people, between the players, and and it's it's sort of extended family that that exists in America. Yes, uh, definitely, uh, Sanju. And I tell you something: you must continue your good work and continue to be part of the. You, you spoke of family and the U.S. Tigers family, but you are a big part of the CCUSA family and the U.S. Open uh, family as well. And I'm, I know that. This pandemic is too small for you to knock you down. I'm sure, I'm, I'm positive that in December, I'll be seeing you at the US Open. I know you will try your best. You know, I will definitely try my best. And listen, I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to get me on today and uh, wishing you a very safe and healthy rest of the few months. Um, hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot that you've been uh, a wonderful part of the program this morning and we want to wish you and your family continued success. Please be safe and of course all the best to the US Tigers as well. Thank you so much, Vinod. Appreciate it. Well, you put it there from Sanju Patel, a very key man in the setup at the US Open. A wonderful uh, guy. If you've ever met him, a really wonderful chap and the one that can really help take cricket America forward in America. We want to thank him. And we want to urge you, the fans on the Maxi, to continue watching and to continue to entertain you during this period of the COVID-19. Good morning. Which is the most authentic cricketing league in America? U.S. US Open, Open Cricket. Cricket. Which is the most exciting cricket in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of views in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Which, 
Which cricket league has the higher number of players in America? US, US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of teams in America? US, US Open, Open cricket. cricket.